Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at maximum. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish to hear energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. From when? Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host David, and joining me today we have a full house for a change. We have Amy. Hello. We have Stuart. Wait for it. Nope, we have Scarecrow. Good morning. We have EJ. Howdy, howdy. And we have Eugene. Hello. Now, this week we're talking top five sci-fi anime. And Stuart is here. He's just having some... To say he's having serious technical issues is not quite right. He can't hear us. We can hear him quite happily. Oop, he's typing. Stuart, we can hear the typing through the call. Just saying. Um... the hell so we are having a few minor skype issues right at this point in time yeah anyway let's move on and start with our top five sci-fi anime let's start with ej oh now let's see if i can remember my number five that i just said uh oh yeah attack on titan (laughs) attack on titan Uh, is that sci-fi i don't know no, I do not believe that one is actually would actually be considered sci-fi. There's too much, too many fantasy elements involved. If we're going to admit this is sci-fi, we could probably admit Sword Art Arc Three as sci-fi. Well, here's a question for you: What is sci-fi. the definition of sci-fi? How do you define that? Well, we have Generally, a whole podcast about that. <laughs> oh yeah. Generally, it comes down to. What element is there more? Is there more technology? Is there more... It magic. comes down to basically magic... What is the, what is the crux... Creatures what is versus the crux, technology. Yeah. What is the crux of the story? So, is the crux of the so, story magic or is the crux of the story technology? Because that tends to be the key difference between fantasy and sci-fi is... Fantasy series tend right. to rely on magic and mysticism, whereas sci-fi tends to rely more on the technology side of things. So, the only so thing I, sci-fi about Attack on Titan is the compressed air thrusters that they use to try and kill these giant humanoids that they cannot explain how they come about. Right, but they are trying to understand it rationally, and there is no mystical element to Attack on Titan. Basically, these creatures, yes. however they come about, personally I think it's, it's some sort of technology or biotech or something, but even if that's not the case, these creatures evolved. Uh, they started attacking human beings, and they've led to the, that's led to the collapse of society uh, and, and the human race. And so, I would argue it's post-apocalyptic sci-fi because everything can be understood rationally. And I would argue that no, uh, the departure can't. from reality how is you, rational. So, and whereas how do you explain the freaking city that is apparently safe from these damn titans, but no one can explain how it, how it appeared or how it's maintained or anything. It just is there. But That's just because... the crux of it. Right, Half well, just stuff because... They have, 90% of the stuff they have is just there. No explanation as to how it's there. It's not built, it's just there, just and they just you... all move in. But, well, there are plenty of hints that it was constructed by, by humanity... Uh, as a last uh, vestige or a last uh, ditch attempt to protect uh, to protect themselves and save the species, so you could argue that, and just because it's not explained, does not mean it came about by mystical or magical means. And at no point do they ever imply that it was a magic by mystical or magical means. Uh, and no, nor is there anything mystical or magical about it. It is a human built structure. I mean, it's kind of like the pyramids. Or some of the other megalithic. 
Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to give this one to EJ. But never... He, he yeah. makes a fairly decent argument. There is no real sort of magical, mystical sort of elements in Attack on Titan. So, apart from the Titans, of course. So I'll, 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 <clears throat> let, I'll let this one slide, but only because it's number five. <laughs> so, Amy, what's your number five? Stelvia of the Universe. No idea what that is. You might have to explain it, darling. <laughs> um, Earth got hit by a uh, solar flare, turns the sky a different colour, and the kids are flying spaceships to defend <laughs> it when the next solar flare comes through and really wipes out Earth. Fair enough. Uh, uh, and you... they find out a few interesting new things too. Nice. Yeah. Uh, my number five is Kill the Kill. Ooh, somebody's ringing. Sorry. <laughs> Banana <laughs> out, out to the airlock you go. Now, if I throw EJ out the airlock, you'd never, you'll never get back in without breaking Skype. So. <laughs> Please, throw me out the airlock. It'll be entertaining. <laughs> so, um... So... Strip yeah. them naked before we throw them out the airlock, remember? <laughs> All the resources available. Um, and a killer kill. It's probably... The reason it's on my top five list is not because it had a good story or anything like that. The story is fairly average. It had its moments where it was just batshit crazy, which was was awesome. Did get a little bit repetitive by the end, but my favourite part by far was the music. The soundtrack for Kill the Kill is one of my favourites of all time. And I'm boring Scarecrow. So, just no, with no, that, just you up. get to do your number five, and then I get to your one. Okay. Bubblegum <laughs> Crisis Tokyo 2040. Explain that one. Okay, basically, massive earthquake has hit. Everything has gone to hell in a handbasket for hum- for the citizens of Tokyo. To try and make things better for themselves in the recovery, they've created these, uh, basically, bioroids called boomers. Problem is, the damn things are incomplete as all hell and have a tendency to go rogue. The police have a f- task force to deal with them that... Their tech suck. is so outdated that they suck such major portions of ass that they are basically a comic relief. And the only thing that can actually deal with these things once they've gone rogue is four girls wearing armor that's basically a controlled version of the things they're fighting. Fair enough. Uh, moving on, let's see if Stuart can jump in and give us his number five. Nope. No? Uh. Nope. Nope. Stuart's still having technical issues. Great skills, Stuart. Uh, let's try Eugene. Eugene, what's your number five? Um, I'm gonna go with Robotech for number five. Robotech. Nice, a classic. Yeah. Well, it a is. Classic. I'll I'll give it a classic, even if it is the unholy mishmash of three completely separate series. Yeah, I I, I knew he was gonna jump in and say that. That's why I sort of left it for him. Um, anyway, moving on to number fours. My number four is One Punch Man. Again, because it's a comedy series, it's fairly well re- well written. The art style is fairly unique. It's f- similar to Kill the Kill in art style, actually. Um, and it has its moments of what the hell is going on. I really, really enjoyed it, and it was one of those series when it was coming out, I was looking forward to every single episode of it. Uh, I will have to admit, this is probably one that I should be going, it's not sci-fi, but I can't, given the giant freaking spaceship that that this one guy punches his entire way through, deals with the guy in charge of it, and then goes, huh, now I'm bored again. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. the, the, the whole series, the thing that has challenged him isn't the boss fights or anything like that, it's the fact that in this what? universe, he was rated as a really low-level superhero um, because it's like a hit, there's like a hero ranking system. And even though he broke every record in the physical side when he did the 
the written side, he failed catastrophically. But because he did so spectacularly in the physical side, he still passed. But he got the lowest of the lowest rating. So the whole series evolves around him kicking these bad guys' asses and, cli- and climbing up the food chain of hero rankings. Well, everyone thinks he's muting off the S-Class guys, the highest ranking guys. Because they also turned up. And they're like, how can this, this C-Class guy, this lowest ranked guy defeat this big big boss it doesn't make any sense and yeah so he's slowly climbing up the ranks it's it's, that's his sort of challenge but my favorite part was when he got belted all the way to the moon and he's just like (laughs) he just sort of looks around and shrugs and sort of takes aim back at earth and jumps back (laughs) (laughs) and the the boss is like well that's him done with and then he just lands on the ship next to him he's like oh well this isn't good for me (laughs) is he taken after goku it's very much of anything. <laughs> it, it's very much a piss take on that shonen style anime series, and it's done really it's, well. It's not so much he's making like Goku; it's more he's making like Vegeta. Because once this guy winds up in combat, he does remind me of an irked Vegeta very much. Oh yeah. It's not because he's out just... of combat, he's pure Goku. In combat, oh, uh, when did you turn into Vegeta? Yeah, pretty much. Where's your hair? So. <laughs> Anyway, uh, number four, Amy. Psycho Pass. All right, Scarecrow, explain that one for me. <laughs> well, this is the one that uh, that we were at the anime show and we tr- that Amy decided to show it right before we had to close the club down, essentially, because no one comes anymore. It's not my fault. I'm, I'm made bloody exhausted go... after work. This one basically made... Uh, what was it, episode two? Yep. Bas- Doc basically went, nope. Dot, nope, not dot, oh hell no, never again will you this be shown. Wow. It's basically, uh, kind of like a noir sort of feel. Okay. Crime show, but where if you do, you have a, it's overarching AI computer system. Correlates it's everything. actually you have full a, of brains. Yeah. It's actually <laughs> literally full of human brains. Fair enough. Um, they, and they have really you have cool sounds. <laughs> yeah, they pop like a cane toad in a microwave. Yeah. <laughs> it was the popping like a cane toad that made Doc go no. <laughs> Fair enough. He was just he was just talking to Greg and then you know, eh, let's see what's happening on the anime he looks up and, and just watches guy randomly pop like a cane toad in a microwave. It's like no way in hell. <laughs> oh. uh, EJ, what's your number four? You actually stole it with One Punch Man, but I was actually, that's another one you really could debate how much sci-fi it is and how much fantasy. Personally, I think it is very interesting blending because all of their powers come from, you know, none of them come from from any scientific or rationally understood means, plus all the creatures that are uh, are there. I mean, yeah, you've got some robots and things like that, but a lot of those creatures are very much just, you know, straight out of... Japanese um, uh, fiction, you yeah. know, myth, you know. That's why I said uh, I could probably debate it, but the last couple of episodes with the giant spaceship and the bosses in there and everything, plus and the, 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 the moon the secondary, secondary character being a cyborg. Yeah, uh, that one too. That does really push in, push, yeah, it, plus it, Robo Knight or whatever it is and put it this some way. of the other heroes. does yeah. push into the sci-fi. Yeah, when we did this, this right. when we did what is sci-fi, what isn't sci-fi, we quite, sort of came up with this this scale of sci-fi-ness, and where Star Trek and stuff like that is and is right up one end, Star Wars is somewhere near the middle, and stuff like One Punch Man is right at the bottom, where it's sci-fi elements but not sci-fi oriented, um, which is I disagree that Star Trek is is hard sci-fi though. Oh no, I'm it's, it's higher, I'm just saying it's higher up the scale than Star Trek. I was just that's a rough idea. Um, oh like, yes, okay. yeah, like Contact and that. That was that. We, Contact was at the top of the list. Like it was right up the hard end of the sci-fi spectrum. Um, because Contact, uh, anything by like Heinlein or Arthur C. Clarke. Exactly. So it, like even Stargate. Stargate. I think we only gave a six out of ten on the sci-fi scale. Because while yes. it's oh, yeah. sci-fi, it's it's also a lot of not. <laughs> like Star Trek, I think got a, I think we gave a seven. I can't remember. It's, it was a couple of years ago now. 
Um, Stuart is still jumping in and out of the Skype call. <laughs> Stuart is still having some minor, minor yeah, issues. Minor issues. Uh, Eugene, what's your number four? Uh, my number four is another classic. Um, gotcha Man. Uh, uh, a lot, a lot of people in America knew it as the really crappy butchering of Battle of the Planets and G Force, but the the Japanese version or the redubbed version of Gotcha Man is a hell of a lot better. I'll pay that one. Yeah. I'll pay that one. Yeah, so, see, Scarecrow is my resident anime guy, so. So yeah, which is why, which is why I knew he would force himself awake because he's normally asleep because he normally works last no, he night. Didn't. So. No, no, no he didn't. Me being awake all falls go falls to Amy. <laughs> Fair enough. That's uh, usual. All right, so everyone's done <laughs> for. At least I'm not a, not a, so completely out of it. I actually was yep. asleep this time. Yep. Uh, no, I haven't done my fourth yet. You haven't done your fourth. You. Go for it. Okay. No. Uh, Space Battleship Yamato, both the original version that most Americans would know as Star Blazers and the recent Redo 2199. The original was fantastic, but very dated. The recent Redo on it, though, has really made it shine. Yeah. And oh. we have a new season of that starting later this year. Nice. Yeah, I heard them talking about that um, about 12 months or so ago. Uh, one of the guys I know that does... A lot of cons over in Japan was talking to me about it. So um, yeah, they confirmed that they confirmed doing season two of it. So nice. and it should be out later this year sometime. So sweet oh, more Yamato to play with! Yay, giggity! <laughs> I'm gonna leave that as giggity. Um, <laughs> <laughs> giggity, giggity, go over. Yeah. So, moving right along, let's move up to number three. So, I will let um, Eugene go first for number three. Okay. Uh, my number three was, was Space Battleship Yamato. <laughs> for pretty much the same reasons. You know, I, I love the original. I've seen a couple of the redone, epi- the, the, the newer episodes, which are fantastic from what I've seen of them. They've kept they've kept the story pretty much the same, just updated it to be more modern and more current and more equal more, with more equality in it than just a single token female who acts as a fucking princess all the time. <laughs> and, and, and the detail the, the detail and, uh, in the new series is fantastic. Yeah, for the first time we've got a freaking spaceship in an anime that actually has properly placed thrusters and that uses them. Yeah. So, uh, my number three, moving right along, is probably one of my favourite shows from my childhood. Um, Actually, the next two on my list are favourite shows from my childhood. Um, It is Zoids. Uh, I hate you sometimes. I know. (laughs) You knew what was going to be on here. Yeah, I know. You stole my number three, too. Lol. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Let's get back to the drawing board. <clears throat> All right, so have fun with that. Um, so, yeah, so, Zoids, giant m- robot animals running around shooting at each other. You can't go wrong with that. <laughs> so, a lot of that, it had, it had some of the best character development in a series. It also had, that I remember watching, it's got fairly decent soundtrack the the animation of the units themselves does leave a little bit but again it's 20 years old so and the newer series genesis which is the most recent one is actually really really well done so yeah um moving right along scarecrow what's your number three right since you decided to be a douche and take my primary number three i'll go with my backup full metal panic Oh, Full Metal Panic. I remember watching that at Anime Night. That was that was great. <laughs> yeah, and they're doing and again confirmed new series of it coming out this year. Full the third season where we actually close the arc out, the Arbalist goes bye bye and the and its successor comes out as well. Nice. 
So we're finally getting the final series for it. Nice. Amy, what's your number three? I try to work out, would Beyblades count or not? Well, no. not really, it's not so bad. No. Did you, um, Digimon would. Yeah, we'll do Digimon. Digimon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that works. It could be worse. I could have said Pokemon, but that's far off. That would have been a bit on the nose side. That one, I'm afraid, my love. Yeah, that would have, that's, that is, yeah. Anyway, um, EJ, what's your number three? I'm going to say FMA Brotherhood. What was that? Metal, 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 Metal Brotherhood. Brotherhood. Uh, um, not really. No, not really. Uh, I don't really? really count Full Metal. Like no, I don't really count Full Metal Alchemist as sci-fi. I mean, really, yes, it's great, but it's all about alchemy, which is a type of science, but it's also a, a fantasy type of science. He does actually really the only, be there. To, to the an only extent. Part, so the only right. part in Full Metal Alchemist that you can really call as sci-fi is the auto mail. It's really the only part you can call. I mean, we've got alchemy using blood seals binding a soul to armor. That's definitely fantasy. That's fantasy. We've got true, true. Not, just no, you randomly you clap have... your hands together and transmute stuff. That's fantasy. There's too much fantasy in Full Metal Alchemist. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I love the show. Don't get me wrong, but there's just a tiny bit too much fantasy there. No, no, you got me there. You got me there. I will, I will, I will seed defeat. So does that mean I have to come up with a different one, or yep. did the podcast yep. just? Yeah, yep. you got to oh. come up with a new one. <laughs> oh gosh, on the spot, another uh, sci-fi. Um... Hey, so I've got a like list. Of, I've got a list of honorable honorable mentions that I can also use as backups <laughs> <laughs> in case one of my, my primaries get taken. Oh no! Um, I'm cycling through. No, that's that's fantasy. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard uh, when you boil it down, isn't it? <laughs> oh, 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 oh! Cowboy Bebop. Cowboy that Bebop. One, yeah. That one I will pay. Okay, so there we go. Cowboy Bebop. Now, if only I can remember the plot. <laughs> basically, uh, it's, Space it's Bounty Hunter. It's been a while Hunter. since I've seen that one. Space Bounty Hunter, basically. No, yeah, I remember that, but I mean the, the actual what happens. And then they got the, the little boy that they find out is a girl. Oh, God. And the dog, and the Betamax. Yes, they actually reference Betamax. That is how old that is. Wow. Uh, if if anyone out there actually knows what a Betamax is, please comment it in the chat. I'm curious. <laughs> Betamax was a. Uh, da, 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 da. Don't tell them. The whole point of this is to see if anyone actually knows what it is. I know what it is. We're, you're also talking about a the crowd question, that probably doesn't point. remember VHS. <laughs> so yeah. The point here is, do we have anyone in the frickin' in the chat to respond? Yeah, there's one person listening. <laughs> it's our largest audience yeah. in years. It's probably Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big audience when we're doing nights. <sighs> so, yeah, we actually did have a good audience then. Yeah. Um, so, moving... Who? Everyone done number three? Yeah. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Right. I think so. Moving on to number two. My number two, and this one will be a little bit controversial, and I know why, but I'm going to go with it anyway. It's Dragon Ball Z. Now, yeah, we'll give that. It's yeah, I'll uh, give that. There's the main it's got freaking aliens coming out of its ass. Aliens cloning androids, space travel. Even though it doesn't primarily focus around those as key plot points, that's why we rated it really low on the sci-fi scale, it's still got enough still sci-fi, sci-fi elements. Yeah. So, yeah. Dragon Ball Z. Even though it is about punching people in the face, it's still sci-fi. It's even got time travel. Exactly. Yeah. It's all the freaking high notes of sci-fi. And just for those who are curious, I'm specifically talking about Dragon Ball Z Abridged. Team 4 Star, I no. love you. 
No? No. Why not? You're fired. A bridge is spectacular. Okay. A bridge is spectacular, but a bridge series do not count. Fine. The parent series does, but a, the, a bridge doesn't. Fine. Dra- okay, then I'll just go with Dragon Ball Z. I really mean a bridge. They didn't hear me, so I got away with it. Yes, we did. Moving right along to Amy, what's your number two? Gundam Seed. <laughs> Gundam Seed? Nice. Can't really sort of contest that as sci fi, considering it involves around giant robots punching the shit out of each other. In sp- No, trying to in blow space. the shit. Blowing the shit out of each other. No. In space! Yeah. And on Earth. With a nice Earth. side with a nice side helping of pol- of politics just in case the robots just aren't enough for you. Exactly. Um, all right, Scarrow, what's your number two? My sc- number two is the Macross universe. Whether it be the original Macross that was used in Robotech or the prequel to explain the technology, Macross Zero, or Macross 7, which, which really one is a side note for me, or the recent Macross Frontier and the brand new Macross Delta. They are absolutely gorgeous Love them to pieces, and Delta has got a really, really interesting storyline. Where the, where the singing part of it isn't just so much there as a side story for while the pilots are fighting. The singers are actually getting it, now getting out there on the battlefield trying to stop this disease that's taking over people's mind. And the pilots are there to support the girls, for once. Nice. So... Eugene, what is your number two? Uh, for number two, I'm going to go with Voltron. Voltron. Can't go wrong with Voltron. Nope. Not even going to contest this one. No. Can't contest it. No way, shape, or form. The, the only question I have about Voltron is who would win? Voltron or the original Power Rangers Megazord? Voltron. Power Rangers. My money's on Voltron. Holy well, see, with the Power Rangers, you have uh, multiple different types of robots with different types he's, of skills. But... He's referring to Gen 1, the original uh, the original Tyrannosaurus, Mastodon, Sabertooth Tiger. Yeah, all, the way, all the way up to the, the, the Dragon Zord and the Titanus. Yeah, right. so basically so go I'm all the way saying... to Ultra Zord sort of thing. But yeah. again, I, my money's on Voltron because... There are a couple of points in there where Voltron has been demonstrated to have the power to destroy star systems. They just generally don't use that much because it's not necessary. Okay, then, yeah, you can't compete there. Never mind. Yeah. They're just as awesome on the assembly side, but Voltron just has more outright power. Yeah, more juice. Right. Well, I was thinking, I didn't realize because I, I haven't seen I mean, Voltron. come on, guys. One epi- in one episode of Power Rangers... There's a solar eclipse and the Mega Zord loses a compl- all complete power. Oh, I remember that. That was hilarious. God, admittedly, I haven't seen that in, what, 20 years? Probably longer. Oh my god, it has been that long. <laughs> it's kind of yep. bad. It's kind of bad when they you just did an, They just did an anniversary series commemorating the, the origins of Power Rangers. Yes, it's been 20 years, wow. if not more. So, all right, um, 30 years if you're watching the Japanese version because they did 10 years before it managed to make it over to, to English variants yeah. all right, so who has not done their number 2 yet I remember, I remember the original um, uh, commercial before Power Rangers came out um, and I was so disappointed when I saw it because the commercial had them morphing into the animal. And I was so disappointed when it was like Zords instead of like them actually turning into the animal. Are you sure you weren't watching Animorphs? <laughs> oh, I loved Animorphs too. I, I, but that was much later that I discovered Animorphs. Um, but yes, I haven't done my number two, Trigun. Trigun? Number two. Nice. Oh, I remember Trigun. We watched that anime night. That was fun. The main character of that is so Goku with a gun. And he's a tree. He's a tree hugging version of Goku. With yeah. a gun. No, no. He is a tree. He's... You guys not remember that? They're they're plants. That's why that's why they don't age. Uh, it's so been a long time since I watched Trigon. 
Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can him, him and, and his, his. I just remember his hand uh, turning brother. into a giant fuck you cannon because fuck you and blasting a hole in the moon. Was it the moon? Yeah. Because, well, no, but that was a that was a fake arm because he lost his real arm. Yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Everyone's done two. Let's move on and do number one then. So, Eugene, what's your number one? I'm going to go with another classic, Transformers. Oh, the same thing. The original Gen One Transformers. Yeah, that's that's definitely a classic, and if you haven't seen it. It is the worst drawn, worst coloured Transformers ever, but it works. I liked it. It's like you watch Starscream talking to to Megatron, and he'll change colours half a dozen times while they're talking without it cutting. <laughs> <laughs> Just sort of randomly flick between the different Transformers for no batteries, like Transformers Starscream style colours, just over and over again. It's like what the hell. If you can find the original release on Rhino, they those versions have all the mistakes still in them. The later versions, they cleaned them up. Not the version that I've got. I, I've, I've got a DVD box set, and mine is hilariously bad. <laughs> I have the old Rhino version, which has the mistakes in them. Yeah. Because yeah, there's, there's one scene where Starscream's talking to Megatron. And the only reason I remember this is because I was sort of flicking through the episodes God, probably two years ago. And when I, when I got the box set, just to sort of remind myself of it. And Megatron's bitching at Starscream for screwing up. And Starscream's his normal colours. And then he's the colours of the, the black and purple one. Then he's back to the normal colours. Then he's the colour of the, of the, the light blue one. And he stays like that for... for about a second, and then he goes back to being the Starscream colours. <laughs> and then when he flies off, he changed colour again. He changed colour again. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on? Where was Colgy Control? What the hell? <laughs> so yeah, so if EJ was watching that, he would probably start having a fit. <laughs> yeah, uh, especially consider like I, I literally I watched Trith Element last night when I was done colouring, and my mind is still in colouring mode. And I'm just like, my God, it's so red. <laughs> you know, like, everything, like, if you go back and watch it, everything is red. Yeah. It's, like, really, really red. Even the blue is red. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, um, my number one is, and honestly, I've got a toss-up here between two. Um, they're both Mecha. One of them is from my childhood, one of them is more recent. Now, Out Noah Zero, which aired relatively recently, I thought was probably one of the most well-written sort of um, series, right up to the end of Season 1. Season 2, it went a little bit, what the hell am I watching? Um, started becoming repetitive. But Season 1, where outclassed, outgunned in every conceivable way, the main character still manages to outthink the opponent. The, the opponent's greatest weakness is their ar is their arrogance, and he uses that against them. And it's done really, really well. And it was one of the few animes that I didn't wait for, because I do an anime night at my place every week, and it was one of the few animes that I didn't wait for anime night. I would watch it the moment I got it. Um, the other one being, and Scarecrow's going to hate me because it's probably his number one, is Techno Man. Now, I can't well, that was a good show, but that was on my honourable mention list because it's so hard to find a good co good copy to watch these days. Yeah, I know. It's it disappeared into nowhere's it just vanished. It uh, disappeared into the ether that it came from. It's like no. Yeah, yeah. and Australia was the I only country. It's, it's of it that. Yeah. Yeah, it's just not and there. Australia was the only country that aired it from start to finish that I'm aware of outside of Japan. Um. Because, and even that was probably reluctant. Yeah. Well, the funny thing was, it was shown to kids, and it is not a kid show. It is, like, the most brutal thing around. It makes Dragon Ball Z seem like they're s slapping each other with fluffy pillows. It's really, yeah. really brutal really and dark. really dark. It's not for children, and yet it 
because it was a cartoon, this the Aussie government's like, yeah, cartoon for kids, good enough, done. Next, moving right along. Yeah, they really should have watched the contents. Yeah, they should yeah, have watched past they the. They didn't f- back then. They should have watched past the first episode. Um, they should have watched past the opening sequence. Yeah. So anyway, um, I can't decide between the two, <laughs> but I'm gonna settle on Aldo Zero for the same reason. Kill the kills on my list. The music in Zero was done so well. It's one of my favourite soundtracks, and just like Kill the Kill, it's one of the ones I still listen to nowadays. So, anyway. Zoids? <laughs> Actually, I don't really listen to the Zoid soundtrack, to be honest. More because it's That's damn near me. impossible to find. I've got a few a few components of it, so... Oh, I've, I've, I've found it. It's, yeah. Anyway. Um, number one... Amy. That's hard for me. Because I've got so many in my head and I can't think of their names. Um, <laughs> it's the... Start What's describing it Control... and Scarecrow will know it. C- controlled by the spiral. Um, everyone lives underground. Gurren Lagan. Tank and Topper. Gurren Lagan. See, I knew he'd know it. Just for the most vague random description. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let's. As soon as she said controlled by the by the spiral, it's like taking up the gun. Okay, nothing that's... else could cover that. Okay, how about we'll, we'll, I'll put you to the test. Space series, girls, spaceship, pirates, audacious space pirates. Woo! Got it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really really stupid series. <laughs> Funny though. Oh yeah, it, it was funny, but it was really, really stupid. Um, so anyway, Amy, why do you like that yeah. one so much? Because it's random off the spot, and it just ended up being one they could think of that matches the description we're working with. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Scarecrow, what's your number one? Or have you done number one? I can't remember. I haven't done my number one yet. Um, okay. This is technically poaching slightly on Amy's number two. But basically, each and every Gundam series comes in on my number one. Which shouldn't surprise anyone knowing who knows how much of a Gundam fanboy I am. Yeah. But, 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 but put it this way, his music, Skype symbol is style. from Gundam. His Facebook pictures are from Gundam. He has more Gundams on a wall than I have Zoids and Lego and sci-fi stuff. And DVDs, and Blu-rays, and shoes, and clothes, and hey, CDs hey, hey, combined. Hey, hey, hey. No, I don't have <laughs> shoes, CDs, or clothes. No, no, I'm just saying, Not if you add it up... Trying, if... but I just can't find them. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I just... Well, Amy had Gundam Seed, and I love Gundam Seed to pieces. It's pretty much the show that got me into Gundam. It has I was actually Gundam on... Link. Yeah, I actually Seed got me back, got me into it. I watched Gundam Wing years ago, and it didn't really impress me that much. I loved some of the mech designs, but the characters bored me to tears, and the lack of clear plot. But from Seed into Double O, I then started researching older Gundam shows, and just fell completely in love with the whole series. And the fact they're still releasing new ones is driving me up the bloody wall. <laughs> Hey, Thanks, it's... Bandai and Sunrise. Thank you for redoing the Unicorn OVAs as a proper series with way... with the politics side dialed all the way up to 39. <laughs> Five episodes in, and we're barely even halfway through the first movie, but so much politics is making my head just go, ah, pop. <laughs> ah. You're the only person I know that complains about new content for your favourite series. Unico- the Universal Century was and the politics involved in that was never my favourite part of the show but Stuart is still attempting to Stuart is still attempting to join the call he just sort of jumps in crashes out uh. <laughs> so, when, whenever he is in the call we can hear him it's just yeah so anyway EJ, what's your number one? <laughs> I was wondering when you were going to ask. 
I'm getting um, there. I'm going to have to go with my manly ability to use the power of the spiral uh, and go with Tempentag and uh, Gurnlogan. <laughs> Amy just took that from you. Yep. Huh? Amy I don't just took care that if you stole from it from me. I don't care. Come up with another one. You've got to come up with another no, one. never. I can't. There is nothing better. <laughs> There's nothing that compares. I can't. <sighs> I, I, I love, that is my favorite anime ever. And nothing can ever beat it or compare to it. So I can't pick another one. I just picked it because it's something I knew off the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> I have it in my cupboard. Um, well, that's all right, guys. I've got a couple of honorable mentions. Uh, no, we've, Stuart has just sent me his list for his top five. So Ooh. we'll cover that really quickly. Stuart's number five is Voltron. Number four is Ghost in the Shell. Number three is Evangelion. Number that was two... on my honorable mention list. Yeah. Number two, now, I don't think this counts as anime, Stuart. But... Mm. <coughs> it's oh. animated. Uh, actually, Clone Wars was anime, which is annoying. Yeah. Um, How was Clone Wars? No, the, the, not the 3D animated one, the one that came out before that. Um, oh, I'll, 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 that. I'll give him Star Wars, the Clone Wars, the... The original, not Rebels, or or the new animated one. <laughs> he says, I'm breaking my own rules, screw you. <laughs> um, and number one is Mobile Suit Gundam Wing. Yeah, I saw that coming. Yeah. And hello, I just covered the entirety of the Gundam universe. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Alright, if it's alright, I'll put a, throw out a couple of honourable mentions that wait, almost made you, my list. Um, but... Wait, we've got one more. We do? Oh? Hasn't, um... Eugene, have you, you did EJ did Gurren Lagan. No. Eugene, oh, that's right, you... he didn't. Eugene, have you done number one? Yeah, I did number one. I did Transformers. Oh, that's okay. right. Cool. That's just, I figured that's what Amy was worried about. Yep. Yeah. Uh, cool. Alright. Honourable mentions time. Uh, on my list of honourable mentions, up first was Code Geass. Nice. Then, basically, after that, I had a couple of other minor ones, like Giver, the bio-boosted armour, <laughs> Infinite Stratos, Heroic Age, and... And what was the last one? And Aquarion. Pat Labor. Oh, and Aquarion. And Majestic Prince. They were pretty much my round out. They were all, they're were they all fantastic. I wish I could have had them on there. But you gave me a list of five, not ten. Right. Uh, on the honourable mentions list of what the hell am I watching sci-fi, I'm putting Bodacious Space Pirates because it is definitely a what the hell am I watching series. Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. It's like, no, it's really not. Schoolgirls working in a cafe then suddenly turning, going to their second job which turns out being Space Pirates. Yeah, flying around on a giant spaceship and just robbing random rich people. And the rich people are happy about being robbed. It's like, what the shit? It's like, being robbed is part of the a space cruise line gig. It's like, that doesn't even... That's... that's What? <laughs> so... Anyway. Um, Things got a bit weird in that universe. Oh, yeah. I have one honourable mention. Yep. Paper Rider and the Star Sheriffs. The oh. fuck is that? Wow, you've broken Scarecrow. It's, it's... That's one that's... That's in the mystical... It exists, but no one has a copy of it category. Oh. I have it. Share the bloody love, damn it. Oh, well, Peter Collins in it. Peter Collins does the voice of the the robot in it, the spaceship robot. Nice. Um, Stuart says honorable mentions: Space Dandy and Titan AE, Titan After Earth, which was more of a Disney sort of animated style movie, but I'll allow it because it was in spectacular. 
Yeah, what I'll allow that. Expect to catch it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that, if it's the original Inspector Gadget, I will allow it. Yes. Uh, the original. Uh, if it's any of the remakes to try and modernize it or make money out of, it, out of a dead series, then no way in hell. Yeah. I think the original, I have the original at home, remember? I know. Oh, so. well, at least it's better than. At least we can say one thing. The true hero of Inspector Gadget was not the little girl or the inspector. No, it was that long-suffering dog. Brave. Oh yeah, the long-suffering dog is definitely the hero on Inspector Gadget. No ifs, ands, or buts about that one. Well, it goes the, Brave, uh, then Penny, the, then Inspector. Yeah. Not the chief. Not the uh, chief who kept getting blown up. No, 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 nope. no. It's definitely the that dog. That was just a bit of comic relief. It was all... The true hero was Brains. He did all the legwork. He did, he did all the solving. He did the... He was protecting Gadget from his own blundering and everything else. And He's also a master of disguise. It, gets, master of disguise. I thought that's Freaking because... ninja. He's a freaking that. ninja as well. To be able to pull some of the stuff that he pulls off. He's got to be a... No, no, he, dre- he dresses as a ninja on multiple occasions. I don't distinctly I remember it. <laughs> he can just... All right, guys, and then at the end, he gets uh, no I gotta credit get going. at all. I gotta, I gotta get back to work. All right, cool. Okay. Thanks for joining us, EJ. Right. Um, yeah. We're just about to do the model report anyway, and then if we can get Stuart on the line for more than a minute, the news. So. <laughs> all right, I'll catch you guys later. Yeah, good luck. Bye. Thanks. Nah. Okay, Eugene, it is time for the whoops, model report. <laughs> Tried to hang up on EJ hey, as he hung up and accidentally called him back. <laughs> Today's model report is going to be short and sweet. Um, Ravel has gotten around to reissuing a couple model kits which uh, fans have been trying to get pieces from for quite a while. Nice. They have reissued. They reissued the um, USS Dallas from the Hunt for Red October in one four hundred scale. And coming out soon is the Soviet Typhoon, aka the Red October in one four hundred scale. Nice. Well, people have been looking. People have been looking for these kits because. From the best of both worlds, as in Star Trek The Next Generation, the Challenger class needed the conning tower off the Red October. And the Mars Defense Probe, which I posted a picture of, you can clearly see that it's made from two Dallas submarines and the Red October. And uh, the other... Oh, it lost the one picture. Oh, wait. Yeah, it lost the other picture I I shared that you'll have to click on. Um, Alien and, um, from Polar Lights, in honor of... They've, re- they've released a resin model of Executive, o- Executive Officer Kane with a egg and face hugger. Or check... Yeah, a chest buster and egg base. Now that's a resin kit and it's expensive. Its suggested retail is about $180. Now the Red October and the Dallas are only about uh, 15 to 20 bucks each on the outside. So they're very inexpensive kits. Very nice. Mm hmm. Uh, the nice. Dallas is up now. The Red October is coming soon. I just wish they'd actually give us a Cheyenne from the SSN store. SSN story. So, well, if you're looking Tom for Clancy the Cheyenne, if you're looking for the warp missiles from the Cheyenne, I happen to know that Perry County Hobbies has some marker engines, which just so happen to very strongly resemble. Those and if you send them a PM, they're more than willing to uh, send those around the world. Yeah, the uh, problem is that the Cheyenne's a final flight 
six eight eight, and the Dallas is a first flight. The design is actually oh, different. Ninety nine percent of the way talking. there is still close. Apart from the fact that Cheyenne has its di- has its diving planes retractable on the bow, not on the freaking sail. Oh, you're not you're not talking the same Cheyenne I'm talking about. I was talking about the Cheyenne class from from uh, from uh, Best of Both Worlds. You're talking something. No, I'm talking the USS Cheyenne, the actual SSN seven seven three. Oh, okay. Or is it SSN 772? It was pretty much the last of the 688 boats. And it was used in, by, in another Tom Clancy story uh, a number of years after the Red October one. Okay. Which was an okay. adaptation of a game, so... Okay, before you end up debating, let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. model report from Perry County Hobbies. Uh, so cool, thank you very much for that. One of these days, I'll get out to Perry and Hobbies and annoy you in person. But being on the other side of the world, not the easiest thing to do. Um, yeah, having quite got, we haven't quite got the transporters working yet. Yeah, or the jump pads from Pokemon. Now. So, I think we may or may not have Stuart on the line. So, oh, oh, there he is. Yep, we can hear him. So, I think it's time to do the news. He'll start in a second. He's a little bit behind all us. All right. Uh, sorry for all the technical issues. I'm still trying to figure out. I can't hear anything on my end, but I can hear everyone else. So, so uh, starting off, um, South DC, and Arrow uh, Oliver is going to visit Hub City to time off the question. Another hero. In the Pretty major. Uh, there's going to be villain cast next year. So we make it some crossover. He being on DC, uh, Tom Cavanna, aka uh, Harrison Wells, has implied that someone is going to die to finale of Flash, which last season go by. It's going to be some feels bad. Yeah, we're getting a lot of uh, vocal fade on Stuart's end. Yeah, yeah, Stuart's having a lot of technical issues. Um... So he's just, yeah, we're not sure what the hell's going on with that. Um, I think his computer must be dying. Um, so he hasn't sent me the news. So. I don't know either. Really annoying. Oh, he's back. Oh, that was odd. Anyway. Um, yeah, uh, moving on to uh, Gotham and um, the Azrael episode has aired. Azrael is a huge member of the DC of the Batman uh, line. Start off as a villain and sort of becomes an anti-hero towards the end of it. Nice. Uh, the only other major news... Uh, oh, um, uh, Civil War. Uh, broke 400 million international on its opening weekend. Holy shit. Uh, yeah, Civil War is doing really, really so, well. Uh, could be, yeah, end up being a lot of money. Yeah, the it's definitely challenging Avengers, the original Avengers. and Other than that, nothing too major has happened. No. Sweet. Well, that makes it easy. Uh, uh, this week's sci-fi Blu-ray release is The Last Ship. Season 2 comes out. Ooh. That was a good show. Yeah. Cannot wait for number 3. I couldn't... Uh, I watched a bit of The Last Ship and I just got bored with it. Mind you, it was about the same time that I had a bit of a falling out with Adam Baldwin, so... Really is a good good show, and he does play the slightly ass hatish exo perfectly. Oh yeah, he does it. Don't don't get me wrong. It's a it's a good show, and he does a decent role. It. It's just one of those shows that I was like, ah, another sort of post apocalyptic y sort of series. I yeah, was... but it's probably the only one I actually like. They nailed it. Yeah, and but the you're fact Mr. That it's... Military. It doesn't actually surprise me that much that you like it. Military, military. Well, more military. Yeah. 
Gee, thanks, guys. <laughs> I'm allowed to. Why do you think I'm not going, thanks, Amy? <laughs> I know you're allowed to. <laughs> Wait, if I'm not tormenting you, not doing a good enough job, just saying. So, uh, last, last ship was alright, but I, if I remember correctly, the last episode I've watched that I can remember watching um, was in season one where they were at might have been Gitmo or one of those sort of places, and there was a Russian ship blocking the exit. So they used a decoy ship and blew and up a reef it. and they escaped. They blew up a reef trying to sneak out because the, they weren't really meant to be going able to fit through that channel because the reef was blocking the end. Yeah. They had to do it at the top of high tide, and they used a radar decoy, which was basically a giant... Uh, a couple of giant easels and a very big strip of tin foil on the fo- on the uh, shore. Yeah, at the pier. That's pretty much it, and they snuck out, which is actually a legitimate tactic. Yeah. So that's the last episode I can remember watching. What happened after that? Uh, I think that was about halfway through. About halfway yeah, through the first season. It's about the U.S. They start making they. Start they start distributing some of the cure, but they find find out that there's problems with what's going on there because the ship gets. It wasn't made. until the end of season one that they um, actually got the cure. Right. So at this point, they're still trying to get odds and ends that they need for the cure. So, I think they they made the stop at Gitmo before running down to Panama to collect the monkeys for the testing. Yeah. And, yeah, they basically have to go through that, and end of the series, they get the cure, and they start heading back in. Season 2 is all about getting the cure out, and running into more problems along the way, because everything's turning into, basically, medieval fiefdoms. And these guys are the last true vestige of the United States military left in operation, and they get made into the bad guys again by a bunch of, um... How would you describe it? No, um... Yankee, uh, British twats who have taken advantage of an opportunity and are basically portraying themselves as gods because they're immune to the disease naturally. They've been, dri- they've been driving this submarine all over the world picking up people who are immune, so they've got a mismatched crew that doesn't know fuck. So it's a frigate versus a sub, and the sub has the overwhelming advantage, but the fri- the, the des- sorry, not frigate, destroyer, but the destroyer has the better crew. Yeah. Who actually are trained and know their systems. That's the difference there. Oh, okay. The sub winds up destroyed, but the uh, evangelistic twats who are in charge of it kind of survived. Failed ship. Yeah, pretty much. Ran like rats and escaped. Yep, back to Europe. So. And then right at the very end, the scientist who creates the cure gets shot. Oh, well, that's not good. And they leave that as a complete cliffhanger. We don't. We know there's a third season coming. We just don't have any information on it. It's like, you pricks. Fair enough. Well, yeah, the short series. We want to wait till next summer. So anyway, yeah. that's it for this week. Um, we've only got about a minute left. Uh, thank you for joining us for this week's podcast, episode number 81. Um, make sure you check out Perry County Hobbies for all your hobby stuff. Make sure you go to facebook.com slash save sci-fi for all your sci-fi stuff. Make sure you check out facebook.com slash save sci-fi podcast for your podcast related stuff. <laughs> give us a, a like and a share on Facebook, YouTube, on, give us a five star review on iTunes. If you liked it, if you hated it, give us one star, tell us why we're crap. We, we know we're crap. We're the worst sci-fi podcast and we love it. Um, make sure you check out facebook.com slash the deadliest fandom and tweet at deadliest fandom and snapchat deadliest fandom for all your deadliest fandom stuff check out facebook.com slash garrison7 for the garrison7 stuff there's all sorts of awesome news coming out of garrison7 right now so make sure you keep an eye on it and we will catch you next time bye 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 We'll still make it in time. Time. Time.